Hello, uh, my name is Jake Gunther. Uh, I'm the conference producer for this year's Renewable Origination and Development event happening May 17th to 18th in Chicago. Um, this is going to be the first year that we're holding this event in particular, so we're really excited um, about about it happening, you know, given its relevance uh, today and about making it one to, you know, happen every year for, for you know, the foreseeable future. Uh, today, I'm joined by Patrick McNamara. Uh, he's the managing partner at Clean Slate Solar. Um, and, you know, we're going to have a quick conversation in preparation for the event. You know, Patrick, thanks for, you know, taking the time to do this. Thank you, Jacob. And so, I mean, just to start, you know, uh, obviously you've been in the renewable uh, industry um, for quite a while. Uh, I'm curious if you could touch on, you know, what got you got you interested in it initially and now, you know, many years later, what, what's keeping you um, going and, and uh, continuing to with this uh, industry? Sure. So um, initially I got into the renewables industry as a grant writer in 2011 um, and I was working on securing funding for various renewable energy projects including a scrap tire processing facility and a net zero development that was um, you know also used geothermal energy um, at the time in 2011 in Detroit you know I was really interested in um, kind of getting a real job you know graduating as an English major um, you know being a grant writer was a good fit for me and then uh, kind of finding out that grant writing wasn't what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. Um, it was great to, you know, start working in in renewables and subsidy development for renewables. And the company that I worked for kind of flipped into being a, a boutique um, project developer. Um, and, you know, I think what has kept me in the industry is, is just kind of that you know i'm always somebody that needs needed to be interested in the kind of work that they've done um so renewables was a great opportunity for me to work in an area that i care about and believe is transformative um, i still do believe it's transformative and there's a seemingly endless amount to learn as the industry grows and the clean energy transition expands um, and then you know within that Community solar is is really what fires me up the most. Yeah, I mean that you know that's a perfect transition to to the next question because in you know now you are um, you know working community solar, um, but I think it you know I think it's important to kind of uh, explain you know what what how community solar differs from utility scale renewable energy. You know I mean there there um, we've seen how there's limitations of utility scale renewable energy, when, whether it be interconnection queue times or or just issues with you know grid reliability. How does how does community solar um, differ from that? Sure. So I think community solar differs in a, in a few key ways. Um, you know, one of them is just size and scale. Uh, community solar is a lot smaller than utility. Uh, but it, it's on the, the larger side of, of CNI projects. So it kind of lives in the small utility, um, you know, large industrial project size, you know, ranging from capacities between like, you know, one and 7.5 megawatts DC is pretty common in, in most markets. Um, community solar, therefore, takes advantage of unused spaces that would be much too small for community solar, um, like industrial brownfields or large rooftops that, you know, just you know wouldn't be in the conversation in, in in the utility game um and then you know on the other hand utility scale projects are much larger in their environmental impact so um you know at a clip you know community solar projects are, are distributed um you know and they're typically owned by developers so you know the other big way that they're different is you know through ownership and operation um Utility scale projects are owned and operated by utility companies or IPPs, and uh, community solar is typically owned by third-party developers. Sometimes they're community-owned, um, or they're owned by nonprofit organizations in some cases. Um, and you know that brings me to the third way that they're different is the access that they provide to the benefits of solar. Uh, if you live near a, a utility scale solar project. Uh, you have access to solar, but the benefits are not really going to pass through to you. It's all going to happen with a deal between that solar project 
and the developer. Whereas community, the whole point of community solar is to directly connect households to solar and and pass the benefits through directly um, to their utility bill. So, um, you know, I think I think that's the uh, the focus of community solar is just altogether different. It's it's all about you know providing more access uh, to low to moderate income households. And then when it comes to local benefits, there's local benefits um, for both types of projects. Community solar projects are typically what I would consider hyper local, you know, and, and there's a focus on disadvantaged communities. While benefits from utility scale projects are obviously defined much more broadly, but um, when you were talking about a community scale project, you may partner with an organization um, you know, in the town where the project is, um, you're looking for partners to get subscribers. So, you know, the pro community solar has a bigger impact, um, you know, to a community, but it's a much smaller project. Well, whereas, you know, utility scale solar power plant has a, has a larger impact that's kind of spread around, um, to a larger area, the benefits you know, could be considered less direct. You know, those are defined more in terms of economic development, tax revenue, et cetera. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's a, a really good point in in kind of making the distinction. I mean, I feel like in a way you're, you're almost like democratizing uh, solar so that it's, you know, accessible and and but for, for everyone, you know, not just, um, and, you know, for all communities. And it, and I know that you know you you actually recently started your own solar development company in Clean Slate Solar, and you know I imagine it's kind of some of what you mentioned there um, is aligned with you know your motivations to to start this project. But if you could you know touch on you know what else I guess um, you know contributed to to you know make bringing this idea to life, and then kind of the projects maybe or something that you're looking forward to um, down the road now um, in in expanding the the company. Yeah, um, you know, Clean Slate Solar was was founded to bring about more community solar projects to underserved communities. This is where our experience lies. It's what we're good at and what we want to do. And um, you know, we're we're kind of bolstered by the trend of new programs that support these kind of projects in different states and and the tailwind of federal incentives. So um, you know, we're really looking forward to uh, you know working in a few different markets getting some projects up and running that that serve the community um, mostly they'll be on rooftops industrial zones brownfields um, projects mostly in the built environment and uh, eventually we'll get into some some greenfield development as well cool cool uh, you know switching gears a little bit I'm curious if you could uh, touch on uh, you know a piece of professional advice that that you someone maybe have uh, gave you in the past that has really stuck with you today in, you know, in everything that you do, um, even, even perhaps in, in contributing to as, as you, you know, did something, you know, pretty tremendous in, in kind of starting a, a company here. Yeah. Um, you know, I think one of the, the piece of advice that always sticks with me is, you know, just try to be, try to always be a student of your craft, keep your ax sharp, um, once you you've become a master you know or you you believe that you're a master it's it's kind of easy to lose your edge i think that's really true in renewable energy because it's kind of a, a shifting um a shifting landscape as far as incentives and programs and opportunities and equipment and solutions um and what customers are looking for so um it always just helps to to be well read and researched on what you're doing um you know keep, keeping keeping your axe polished so that you're ready to you know to swing it when the next opportunity strikes yeah i mean uh you know transitioning here like for for this year's event you know you're going to be talking about um and, and you already kind of talked about it how how you're going you know how you can empower communities through community solar development um which i think is you know really important um could you give a little preview of of uh you know what that session is, is going to look like i mean you know, you don't want to give everything away because, of course, we want people to, you know, come out and participate. But what what can folks ex expect uh, to, you know, gain from from attending this session? Yeah, so I kind of hope to leave people with a good understanding of what makes community solar different 
uh, from traditional solar development? Um, you know, what what does it mean? What what does responsible development practices mean when it comes to community solar? Uh, you know, and then kind of illuminate some of the hurdles and challenges in developing a community solar project that serves um, LMI offtake. Um, you know, it's going to be a focus for a lot of people who are doing community solar now with with the um, IRA incentives. Um, so I've got a lot of experience in that, some things I can share. And, um, you know, and then, you know, what what is community engagement? What kind of forms does it take? And how does it help uh, or will it help your community solar projects? I think that's what people can expect from my session. Great. Well, you know, really appreciate you uh, providing these insights. Uh, I'm certainly excited to to hear more about um, you know at at the years this year's event and hear about your session. And I hope that that others do as well. So thank you for taking the time to do this. Thank you. Appreciate it.